Yeah, Recon Rental Season 2, Episode 6, hey? Yeah. Coming in with a big one today, a big topic, a just controversial topic, really. It seems to always be, uh, comes to come in and out of flavor, is what I would say. And right now, this topic is definitely in flavor, as we have Metal Jesus Rocks putting out a video about it, the Radical one. I saw Gaming Off the Grid talk about it. Is retro gaming too expensive in 2024? Retro game collecting too expensive now in 2024? If I just say that right off the bat, like, video games are too expensive. What do you, what does it make you think? Well, I mean, I think it's easy to look at the, the top end of the market and, and see the, the craziness of uh, the pricing, especially during the pandemic. But I mean, I think it really depends on what your goals are as a collector. You know, are you, are you primarily a game player? Like, do you want these things to play them or do you want them as kind of tokens of the past? Cause I think, you know, if you, if you define your priority and your goal, then you'll understand what kind of price level you're dealing with. I, I think if you go to the playing side, because this gets lumped together all the time, game collecting, game playing, right? Because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of game players who just have a collection of games, but they don't like, they aren't, they aren't collectors, you know? You're just a gamer with a bunch of games, so you have a game collection. Mm -hmm. And there is a distinction there in how you think and how you perceive prices and how you perceive the market and whatnot. I think if we're talking about gaming in general, um, <laughs> I mean, why are you buying retro games physically? If you just want to play them. Yeah. I mean, I'll go ahead and say that. Like, well, why? Why are you buying physical at this point? <laughs> it's so expensive. It can go, be. Go, it can be. It can be. It can be. You know, uh, an example from Metal Jesus Rock's video. He, it's, uh, he brought up Hagane, like, very early in the video. It was like the cartridge in a reproduction box for a thousand. I don't even know if he knew it was a reproduction box, but a thousand bucks for it, right? Yeah. And it's like, there is not a single soul on this planet who needs to pay to play Hagane in 2024. <laughs> There's exactly not right. a single person who even has to play the game anymore. No. Like no one's life will change if you play Hagane or not. I've never played it. I do not care in the least that that game costs $1,000. I will never buy it. I'm not interested in it. It does not matter. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like a lot of the vitriol or these, like, these knee-jerk, oh my god, gaming is so expensive now. People talk about the Earthbound, the Hagane's, the... Uh, it's Clay Fighter, Sculptor's Cut. Oh my god, how can $1,000 for a cartridge? This is... And, <laughs> I don't want to say it's a complete who cares on the top side of the market like that. But I do think it, it, it's basically just bait. Yeah. It's bait to make people angry. You just like show an expensive game and it's like, wow, this hobby sucks now. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, it's funny when, when I saw that uh, Hagane with $1,000, like just my first instinct was like, oh, a thousand bucks for a box? That's not too bad. <laughs> 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 you know? Yes, the different ways the brain works, right? What it's like if you're more used to this side of the hobby, so to say. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we talk about this, and yes, game collecting, game playing, retro gaming, it is more expensive than it used to be. Mm -hmm. like you're talking about 2018, even with like $3,200 $3 price tags. I don't know what a CIB Hibakane would cost these days. It's probably five, six, seven thousand, I would just assume, based yeah. on the inflation of everything. Yeah. Uh, pandemic, of course, prices went up. Everyone is well aware of this at this point. Prices have come down in the past three years on most stuff. Like retro gaming, retro game collecting is becoming a more expensive or more affordable hobby again, sorry. Yeah. You know, even top end graded sealed stuff, it's all crashing. Like, or, you know, has crashed. Mm -hmm. Prices are coming down. The hobby is becoming more accessible. At the end of the day, uh, not to be too generic, a like, game collecting is extremely popular. Yeah. If you are going to participate in a hobby like game collecting or you want a retro game, like you're playing games now that are 20, 30 years old. You don't need a physical N64. You don't need physical cartridges. You can do flash carding. There are so many alternatives now where if gaming is your side of the hobby with this, get the alternatives. Mm -hmm. Save yourself thousands upon dollars and just emulate or flash carts, original hardware. Like the, the options you have now for retro gaming are... <laughs> Endless, really. Yeah. I do mm -hmm. get a damn near close one to one, one to one experience yeah. doing all of this. Yeah. Now, if you want to go down the collecting side of this, I mean, even on the gaming side, still, I I think it's become a narrative that the hobby is super expensive without actual substance. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things that's really easy to say and you can bait people with it. Like, oh my God, the hobby's so expensive and you have people who don't really participate in it or maybe they want to, but they don't really know prices. And this narrative that the hobby is so expensive, it's so hard to get into, I, I think it's just like wrong, like mm -hmm. completely wrong. Yeah. Um, if we assume the fact that any, any hobby is going to cost money, we know this, it's a, it's a hobby. 
uh, game collecting, game retro game playing, collecting. That's a luxury hobby, man. That is like it's it's in my mind. It is the exact same as if you were out there buying hundreds of watches. Like I don't think anyone's gonna be like, oh my god, you can't buy a Rolex. Like, oh, th that is so bad, man. Like that sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, no one, you don't need this stuff. No one needs any of this. Yeah. So yeah, we have these emotional ties and everything. They're sentimental, but like, you don't need any of this. I accept that all this stuff I own here, I don't need any of this. Which is why going back to the Ghana, like, who cares? If you don't ever get that as a physical cartridge, it, it just doesn't affect anything. But even more so, and Gaming Off the Grid was talking about this a bit, like they were talking about a forty a forty dollar rule, where if you have forty bucks to spend on a retro video game, and this is in a world where brand new games cost what ninety now in the U.S. eighty eighty U.S. ninety U.S. It's like a hundred and some in Canada. If you want to go buy a PS five game, mm -hmm. the forty dollar rule, where basically. If you're going into retro gaming, if you're going into retro collecting, 40 bucks goes a long way. And that is objective. I think you said you wrote down some median prices there from price charts. Yeah. So like, you know, if you were to ask someone what they thought the, what the average price is of an NES game, and we're talking about loose, you know, let's. Yeah, loose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if I think... you're going down the boxed route, CIB seal graded, like, you know, you need money. Yeah. Like, you're well, paying a premium, not even, obviously. Yes, yeah. like, let's not even pretend at this point. If you if you can't afford cartridges, the hell are you even looking at boxes for? <laughs> yeah, that's like, right. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at, you know, 30-year-old items with fragile, you know, fragile stuff. So obviously condition is going to be everything when it comes to price. But let's just say, like, you know, even with carts, you can probably extrapolate this to other segments just by increasing the average. But the average price of an NES game today is $42.29 US. Okay. So really not that bad. And the median price for NES carts is only like $15, $14.97. 15 is even lower than I thought for a yeah. median. Yeah. Because that means like if, if you just quick refresh, there are as many games at 15 and under as there are at 15 and over. Yes. So 721 games, I think, in the yeah, library, something, something like that. Like that. Yeah. You have 350 games that are $15 or under for NES. It's kind of crazy. I mean, it, it is crazy. <laughs> I didn't actually realize that until I looked it up because I was like, I was like, oh, maybe it's like $100 or something. <laughs> I know. Well, because the narrative pushes it so hard that this is such an expensive hobby. And it's so easy to get clicks and outrage, you know, as soon as you post a box with like $1,000 on it. Like if someone doesn't know any better, it's like, well, that's stupid. This is ridiculous. No one's going to collect retro games. You just get that rage bait. Absolutely. And I think Metal Jesus's thumbnail is even him like looking at a $7,000 Game Boy or something in his most recent video. And it's like the state of the retro game market or something. Yeah. Just dramatic as all can be, which I get it. It's YouTube. It is what it is. But like that type of dramatic narrative is what pushes this. Because even I wrote down, you know, SNES medium price, Super Nintendo, expensive console to collect for, right? Median price is 16 bucks on Super Nintendo games. So again, that's, I think, close to 700 Super Nintendo games. 350 of them are 16 bucks or under. So Super Nintendo is the better console. <laughs> it is? I mean, genuinely, I think so. Like, I would way rather play a Super Nintendo game than NES any day of the week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I went even further with this, right? So I just, like, went to price charts. I filtered out variants. I filtered out all the, um, there's just a couple filters you can press to get it to, like, a straight North American list. Right. And manually counting, there's 116 games on SNES cartridges above 50 bucks. So you have almost 600 games that are $50 or below on Super Nintendo if you want to jump into the hobby. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, am I delusional to just say that that's not expensive? But like you have 600 games under 50 bucks to choose from. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I almost think there's this idea with retro game collecting or this hobby where it should be free or something. Yeah. It's, you have a hobby, but going to Starbucks in 2024 is 10 bucks. What, what do you hope to achieve with $30 or 30 year old stuff that you want to go out and collect in a very popular hobby? Video games, video game collecting is insanely popular hobby. What are you expecting 10 bucks to get you? Yeah. You can't even like go to McDonald's and get it. You, you can't. <laughs> I don't go to McDonald's anymore because you can't get anything for a decent price. No. Getting like, you know, the value picks is like 10 bucks now. Yeah. It's, it's, and maybe, you know, price memory hasn't caught up with that and stuff. I think like, price memory is a, is a very determining factor on how much outrage you feel. If you, if you've been part of the hobby for, you know, collecting at a lower level for many years and you see, you know, you're being priced out of higher end stuff. I think, yeah, that can cause some sort of resentment and jealousy that. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think 100% you're right about that. Because so many people too with this hobby, like their hobby, it's hard because it's like you have retro gaming, retro collecting and hunting, thrifting, searching is its own hobby for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I truly like believe that you you don't even really care about what games you own. You just care about the dopamine hit of going out hunting and finding something new. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, everyone's searching for Earthbound for 10 bucks, right? And oh my God, can you believe it? The uh, the secondhand store asks for actual fair market value on stuff. This is, I've never been so outraged. <laughs> how, how dare they? You know what I mean? Yeah, like you have a right to get it at. Uh, yeah, you you're, you're pillaging a store made for poor people. And you're angry that they're like trying to price you out because why the hell are you shopping here anyway? Like this, this. <laughs> maybe it's a different rant for a different video but like <laughs> yeah, like this... thrift stores and secondhand stores aren't there for the middle class well-off dude to go pillage video games from that's not the purpose so if we want to get down to why are they pricing stuff up well it doesn't matter because the purpose of this store has been lost anyway they might as well be a secondhand electronic store because mm -hmm. that's what everyone is using it for so yeah they're gonna go ahead and <laughs> make money yeah they exist to make money too yeah sorry they're, yeah, it, it's for profit. So <laughs> literally, especially if we talk about like Value Village and um, maybe Savers. I can't remember what the other one is, but they're like for profit chains. Yeah. Like they aren't there to help you. Yeah, they're they, not they, a charity. <laughs> <laughs> they literally aren't a charity. Yeah. And you shouldn't expect them to be one. But even just with the uh, super, I just want to get the other ones off here too, because I grabbed some other medians. Uh, GameCube median price, $14. Again, that surprised me because GameCube actually does have like a reputation of being super expensive. Mm -hmm. um, that might be a disc only. It might be a CIB, but if, if you're only looking to play games, get a disc only. Disc only is a lot cheaper than CIB, even with stuff like GameCube. Yeah. Um, I know people are like offended by that. Like, why would I get it? <laughs> you know, yeah. I deserve to have a case in me. No, you don't. Like, if yeah. you just want to play the games, look for the lowest common denominator. Well, you know, the funny thing is if you feel you deserve the case in manual, then you got to be prepared to pay up. Simple as that. And, you know, it's not even like, like Sega Genesis mean of $12 as well. Very cheap to get into. Yeah. And if we talk about hobbies, right? Like hobbies are going to cost you money no matter what you're doing. Repairing cars, buying watches, knitting. Like it doesn't matter what your hobby is. Uh, money has to go into it. Mm -hmm. Video game collecting, video game, retro gaming is genuinely one of the most accessible hobbies that exists. You can have a monthly budget of $50 and participate in this hobby. Like we just said, median prices of 10, 14, 15 bucks on this. Like there are, like, let's say you had 50 bucks a month. In the span of a year, you could buy 60 retro video games in that $10 range. Um, a $600 budget, you can buy 10, you know what I mean? You can buy around 60 of these retro video games and build yourself a collection with 50 bucks a month. There aren't many hobbies where $50 a month lets you even participate in the hobby let alone like are, are, is the narrative going to be everything that's 10 or 20 dollars is trash is that the narrative that uh has become game collecting or game playing well i mean it's certainly the narrative that gets views <laughs> you know it's um i think it's it's really difficult when you when you look at all these games like these popular games it's like you have to you have to look at the the inverse <clears throat> relationship of of the price over the years, it's like there, there's only really two options. It can either go up or it can go down. There's no such thing as a static market in any sense of the word. So it's like, you know, either either these things appreciate over time because people actually want them or they become worthless. And then, you know, are you a collector at that point or are you just a hoarder? It's like that's literally what defines the difference It's like people who collect things that are worthless are hoarders. So the fact that these things do appreciate over time means that someone actually wants them yes and you know i think a lot of the I, we talked about this we touched on this on a different episode here where like it's it's not fun buying cheap stuff people don't want to buy cheap stuff yeah it, they want to get a win it, exactly yeah. right and i think the hobby has gotten this delusional idea and it might be from social media effect or instagram everyone's sharing their game rooms you know starting well i guess one topic there's two here so the first thing with social media here and people with uh sharing game rooms and sharing collections and stuff is I think the idea of a video game collection has become this thing where you have 500, 1000, 2000, you have an entire basement full of video games. That's what it means to have a video game collection. And I really think it's come to a, a just a straight up delusional point of how many games people want to own and how much people like just 
<laughs> how much someone entering into this hobby expects to be able to buy or expects to be able to own. Right. What do you think of that? Right. Well, you know, the funny thing is I feel like I feel like on the whole video game collecting is such a more visual hobby. Like you can look at someone's comic collection and the vast majority of it is in long boxes, right? They st store them on shelves in long boxes. You don't really see how much or what's in there. But when you see like a game collection room, you see like like here, signage. You see the actual physical games because like most people don't store them in a box. They actually like no, you bookshelf them and you put the spines out. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually kind of physically see more so the value there than other hobbies. I think that kind of, and especially when you go on Instagram and you see people's game rooms, you know, you're looking usually at the upper end of the hobby only. Of course you are. No you one's know, sharing. Like you don't have average people sharing their stuff because yeah. it, and it doesn't get views. Yeah. Unfortunately, right? The yeah. person who shares a shelf of 17 PS3 games, 7 PS2 games, no one cares. Yeah. And that is a... Uh, it's just a part of social media. It's yeah. a part of the human. It, it just, it, it is what it is. I don't care about it either, right? I'm going to look at the guy who has LEDs flashing everywhere, three pinball machines. I got uh, the whole PS2 library against the wall, spine. You know what I mean? Like that, that's what gets views and clicks and everything. But I really do think it, it's become this delusional thing now where someone, I want to start retro gaming. And, you know, you start looking at content and stuff. And that's what you get hit by is people who have these game rooms of, <laughs> tens not tens thousands but you know what i mean yeah, yeah thousands of video games just lining the shelves and walls and suddenly you look at your four ps2 games and it's like wow i am inadequate and i always will be <laughs> 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 well you know it's it's so much easier to to just uh complain about it than actually put in the work to build something and those collections like all of are us built over yeah. years upon years upon years yeah and yeah. i think a lot of the thing there is like you see people who like you can't do this in two years you can't Video game collecting, retro game collecting, any kind of hobby of collecting is a year upon years upon years where it kind of snowballs into something. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just like, because you love it. It's like looking at someone who's, you know, retiring and they're like, oh, you got a million dollars in retirement. You must be rich. And uh, it's like that happened over 40 years or more. Yeah, collect like, video games at these exact prices right now for the next 10 years. Anyone listening to this, even like I said, right, $10, $20, $50 a month, you will put together a collection of hundreds of video games in the next 10 years spending 50 bucks a month. Now, again, the second point I was going to bring up here, are people okay not having uh, the video games that everyone wants? Are you fine not owning the Earthbounds, the Silent Hills, uh, all the Mario titles? Like, I know a lot of this stuff is, you know, the great video games on these libraries, but they are also what everyone chases. And I think you get into this thing where Especially like uh, just an easy example here, the game collecting subreddit that exists. It has a certain age demographic, whatever. But the grail on there is Rule of Rose. You will see people almost every week post up like, finally got my grail, Rule of Rose. It's 300, 400, 500. I don't even know what a CIB goes for anymore. Somewhere in that price range. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Uh, is that a game that people actually want? Or... Is it a game that people only want now because social media has pushed it to a point where this is something you should strive for? Right. Do you actually want the game or do you just want the clout? Yeah, literally though, right? <laughs> yeah. do, do you like the game or do you like that it's expensive? If, if the game was cheap, and this is a thing that exists with a lot of games, as I talk about 10 20 $30 video games, if the game was cheap, would you actually care? And I know it's almost impossible to separate the two things, but I really think that's where the hobby is right now, where there's amazing... 10 20 dollar video games and people just don't care mm -hmm. because they don't have a price tag attached to them yeah that's true i mean especially when you get to the disc-based games oh there are did... so many great games for cheap ps2 ps1 i mean 360 at this point is dirt cheap <laughs> it's funny with 360 i know it's not super retro but with 360 you can buy all of the uh i would say the best games on the consoles like the Call of Duties, the Assassin's Creed, Gears, Gears of, of War. War. Yeah. yeah, you can go down all of those, right? The best-selling games on the console, and they're all worth like $7. You can own every great game on 360. Like, reviewed great, bestseller for nothing. All the Halos, like, they are worthless. People don't want them. It's like, it's like shunned on to buy those, <laughs> right? right? Unless you're they're like, sealed. No, even, even then, then yeah. even then. Unless it's Halo. <laughs> like you're just buying gears is like, oh, you're a bro gamer or whatever. You collect Call of Duty games. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I don't know what happened 
with game collecting, but it became a weird spot where you're only allowed to collect Atlas and Horror and JRPG and, oh, got to get all the Mario games. And it's, it's, I think it's just reached a really toxic point where individuality has been lost a lot with video game collecting as we hone in more and more and more on only 40 PS1 games, 20 N64 games. And like, that's all people talk about and that's all people care about. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of similar to, uh, to comics, you know, it's like, if you're not collecting keys, what the hell are you doing? Why, why spend the money? (laughs) That's a similar sentiment, I think. Well, with gaming, I mean, you say, why spend the money? People are, a lot of them are talking about gaming though. It's like you, you, they want to use this stuff, but buying the $10 and $20 games just aren't good enough. Those games just suck. I, I, I don't know what to even... <laughs> if I'm not getting Earthbound for ten dollars, yeah, then this hobby's overpriced and it's trash. That's I don't right. care about the three hundred and fifty other Super Nintendo games that cost, you know, like it's a median price of fifteen dollars. That is hard data. There's nothing there. It's not like like I'm not lying when I say this. There are three hundred games on price charting with a median price of fifteen or less for Super Nintendo, NES, Sega Genesis. Uh, <laughs> I, I really just think this narrative has been pushed so far that the gaming hobby is expensive. And then it always cycles back to the same, well, look at the price of Silent Hill on PS1. It's like 150 bucks. Oh, this hobby's ruined. Yeah. Well, and of course, you know, grading and sealed games get the get the brunt of the rap. Oh, of course. Easy again, right? Easy. Yeah. Like it's that, easy rage bait. Like that Metal Jesus video showing off the $7,000 uh, Game Boy Color. It was like a Pokemon uh, silver one. I, I think I have it in that box over there, actually. <laughs> it's, it's not sealed and graded, but I have a CIB one. Okay. It's the gold, silver Game Boy Color. Super nice, super cool. Like, you, you should own one. <laughs> Go spend the $1,000 or whatever it costs. But okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys don't own one of these? Like, I thought everyone You're did. really missing out. <laughs> yeah, this thing's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> he brings that up in the video, right? And he just like talks to the guy selling it and it, it exists for nothing but bait. That's all it is in the video. It has no bearing on the actual retro game market. It has no bearing on what Metal Jesus purchases. His viewers don't buy this. It's purely there for bait to point to like, oh, look at retro video game grading in the market. Someone won 7,000 for this. Uh, funny enough, they also posted in a Facebook group, they won 5,000. Because, of course, right, you go to a convention. I think you were going to touch on this, too, uh, deeper here. Oh, yeah. But, uh, conventions in general. Let them know how you feel. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it's like there, there's there's an inherent cognitive dissonance there when someone says, you know, I'm walking around this convention floor looking for deals. Like, are, like I just want to, like, oh, like, shake them. <laughs> it's like, do you know how much money and time people pay to actually set up at conventions, pay for the table, take all their crap across the country. And of course, this is all, you know, coming off the heels of Portland Retro. Mm -hmm. So right, that's that's where they filmed, right? That was where the Metal Jesus video was, I believe, was Portland Retro. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if literally the biggest convention, one of the biggest? Yeah, probably the biggest for specifically retro games. I think it's bigger than too many games. Like, I think so. It's one of those two, man, where it's like, that is the convention to attend. Yeah, yeah. And PAX is more like dev oriented, I think. But, you know, it's like, you have all this overhead that people are paying with time and money to bring their stock there. So inherently everything is going to be priced above market to try and make up some of this, you know, windfall and this like uh, expense that they have. So th- there's, there's already just kind of a, an idiocy there for, for looking for deals <laughs> you on find the convention a more, floor. A more diplomatic way of putting that one there. Hey, I, mean, I saw you. I saw you looking. I'm, just, I'm like, is there a nicer word <laughs> than this? No, it's just stupid, is what it is. And you know, the the best thing about conventions for collectors is going there to meet other collectors and building relationships because that's ultimately what allows you to build a nice collection and get things that you want is by knowing the people who have the stuff. Yep, and so, actually maybe getting them for a price that isn't 50% marked up or whatever. Right. Because a, a lot of the dealers, of course, resellers, I mean, oh, those damn resellers, man, they ruin the hobby. A lot of these guys who, <laughs> maybe that's another topic, but the resellers <laughs> at these conventions, resellers in general, right, they ruin the hobby. They put supply back into the market. Yeah. These are the people who suppress prices. Like, supply brings prices down. Anyone hoarding, buying everything, and keeping everything helps prices go up. It doesn't matter if you bought it cheap. You are constricting supply from the market. 
Yeah. But anyways, the resellers that exist there, these vile humans, if you actually <laughs> do talk to some of them, like you said, you can get prices that are much more in line with market. Right. The, and, the, you know, you're really just looking for like, they're, they're hoping for impulse buys. Of course, so, they're selling to people who pay to go to a convention to buy video games. Yeah. It's like you said, right? There's an idiocy there. Yeah. You don't go to a convention to buy video games. Yeah. Like you're, you're basically walking into the most expensive thing that you can. Yeah. It's like going to the carnival to buy food. Yeah. Like a sports game. I'm going to have supper at the sports game. You can do it, but like you're going to pay a lot more. Yeah. For being at the sports game and buying a hot dog versus being at Costco and buying a hot dog. This is what going to a convention largely is in 2024. Yeah. You're paying the premium to purchase at a convention. Yeah. And I mean, anyone who's there, you know, you can obviously buy stuff at a convention for good prices, but... Yeah, it exists. You know, it exists. Well, it, and it's not only that, but like every, literally everyone has access to current FMV of anything they want to look for, unless it's like stupid rare and there's no yep. sales of anything, but you know... Anyone who has any sense will just pull up Heritage or they'll pull up eBay. They'll look at like their Facebook groups, see what things are selling for, and then negotiate. That's how absolutely everything works. And that's why things, again, are, are priced higher because yeah. they expect negotiation. Convention, like if you're at a convention and you're not trying to trade, haggle, negotiate, like you're already losing. Yeah. You, you lose. Yeah. Because um, like you said, everyone has fair market value. Everyone has price charts. Everyone has eBay. Bring it up. Talk to the person selling your stuff. Or, like, talk to them. See what you can do on something. Because a fair offer, a lot of the time, again, with these resellers, the people who are there dealing, you have to sell stuff. They, they, they have to sell stuff. Now, they don't have to give it away, but they have to sell stuff. That's mm -hmm. why they're there. Yeah. You have to make that work. I, I just, it, it just, oh, man. 2024, video game collecting too expensive. I mean, I would, like, adamantly say no. I would adamantly argue against anyone who says this. I think that the hobby in general is as good as it has ever been with information, access to information, people having access to market data, content being created, variant knowledge, everything. Arguably, I'd say the hobby is the best it's ever been. If you can't afford certain things, if you're gaming, grab an emulator, grab a flash cart, grab stuff like that. If you're on the collecting side, know your budget. I think you said that right off the bat. You have to know your budget. Mm -hmm. Know what you can or cannot do in this hobby. Yeah. And I mean, you can't really say something's expensive. Like, what does that mean? According to what? According I, I know. To, according to who? Like, if I'm buying a used car, I'm not looking at Ferraris and saying the used cars market's ruined. Like, I, I, that's not where I participate. Yeah. doesn't matter what a Ferrari costs. I'm looking for a Toyota, man. Yeah. Why do people point to the most expensive stuff and build that as the narrative? It, well, it makes again, no it's, sense to it's, me. It makes sense when you look at it just from rage bait and getting views. That's really all it means. We'll have to name this video, like, why the why is the market so overpriced? Like, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> I, I hate the video games are overpriced and like me and you just look at angry. Like. Yeah, well, it's funny, like when you sent me the uh, the off the grid uh, video, I, I pulled it up. I was expecting to see like another, you know, one of these things. Like, and the, the first one of the first things the guy said, um, he's like, well, expensive according to what or according to who? Like, you know, it's it's all relative. What does that mean? It's unquantifiable because it's all in relation to something else so yeah in relation to i mean uh, maybe it's generalization but i think a lot of the narrative comes from people in their 17 to 22 you don't have a lot of income you don't have a lot of money 50 bucks matters yeah and, and you know it is what it is but that's a lot of the reddit boards that's a lot of social media that you have those age demographics a lot of that narrative gets pushed yeah. and it is what it is so in relation to you know a twenty thousand dollar salary yeah i get it like you you might not <laughs> But, you know, if you don't have any spare money, you shouldn't be collecting video games anyway. No. If you literally have no spare money, no savings, no anything, buying obsolete media that's 30 years old should be the last of your concerns. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're ultimately uh, playing in a, a speculative market. So it's like, you know, the stuff you buy might not hold up over time. You just... No one knows. You just don't need this. You need you need you a need, savings account. Yeah, you <laughs> like, need a emergency Priorities, well. <laughs> yes. Priorities, exactly. Yeah. But let me know. Let us know your thoughts. YouTube video, comment down below. Definitely curious. It's, it's a topic that's always going to be going on. This is never going to stop. We'll probably make another video on this in six months once it's cycled around again. So leave a comment, fan mail, if you're on the podcast, rate and review. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.